Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to go over the Queen D8 Scandinavian, uh, for lack of a better name, because the variation doesn't really have its own name. And uh, the Queen D8 uh, Scandinavian is a far less popular variation than the main line with, with Queen to A5, or the line with Queen to D6, which we are going to go over in the next video, which makes it a great provocative surprise weapon, even though it's a well-known variation, it's uh, far less, less known than the other two. And uh, it might just be like waving a red flag to a bull for the E4 player. And I myself have been studying the variation for a while now because I see a lot of potential in it. I would just like to start with uh, something Bent Larsen said, uh, and that's that the Scandinavian defense is an improvement to the Karo Khan. And basically, since uh, the 1960s, when the Karo Khan began to, to get questioned uh, with... I don't know, the fantasy variation or the tile variation of the advanced variation with h4 and uh, let's say later on the short variation in the advanced Karokan and many other very aggressive lines, uh, the Karokan basically lost its reputation as a very safe opening for black. And that's where the Scandinavian comes in and when I heard about Larsen's quote or basically something he said, it's not a quote, I started thinking about the Scandinavian seriously and I was very much looking forward to doing the series and I found that the Queen D8 Scandinavian is probably the safest variation to play. So, uh, we are dealing <coughs> with the same pawn structure once again. Uh, the, the Karo Khan pawn structure for black, or the Scandinavian pawn structure, however you want to call it, with the solid, uh, solid structure with pawns on e6 and c6, which is really hard to break open for white. And on the other hand, white has the extended d4 pawn, uh, because he took up central space. Now, once again, we are dealing with the problems of the c3 knight uh, for white. So, basically, with the tempo on the queen, we are going to uh, look at the opening moves in a moment. With the tempo on the queen, the knight is blocking the c-pawn, so the, the c-pawn is unable to move for the moment, which means that white is going to have to move the knight out of the way. Now, there are uh, two possible squares. One of them is e2, which is the most natural square and the most often where the knight goes, but the knight isn't really that good on e2. The second square is e4, uh, where white exchanges black's defender on f6. Now, in most cases, that's fine, because the white knight on c3 is a liability, but white wants to attack, and uh, exchanging his knight isn't really such a good idea. Now, regarding the queen d8 variation, uh, let's just look at the position from the last video, queen a5 variation. So, in queen a5, uh, the queen didn't lose time going all the way back to d8. And that is why the queen is often a tempo gainer. That's precisely why the white bishop from c1 is developed to d2, to be able to uh, chase the queen away with a discovered attack by moving the knight either to d5 or to e4, which is what happens in the main line. In the queen d8 variation, after e4, d5, e takes d5, queen takes d5, knight to c3, <clears throat> the queen doesn't go to a5, which is uh, arguably a more active square, it retreats all the way back to d8. This means that black will not have to move the queen, the queen again. Now, uh, it might seem like a huge waste of time, and this is why this variation has a bad reputation in chess theory and uh, in chess literature. But if you were going to have to move the queen again anyway, a bit later on, isn't it better to just keep it at the best possible square? And according to classical chess principles, it's good not to take your queen out too early. So the queen coming back to the 8 is sensible, but strange and counterintuitive. What does white get? Uh, white is unable to create a very strong center with d4 and d4, that's the first thing. So white is never going to be able to have a Pierce or modern or king's Indian centers. Secondly, uh, white is uh, to move now. So white is definitely a tempo up. White has a piece developed, black doesn't have a piece developed. So white has won a clear tempo on move three. But in exchange for that, white's tempo came with the knight on c3, which as we discussed already, uh, you could argue whether it's a good move or not, uh, and whether it's a hindrance or an improvement to White's position. As we said, 
it prevents the c3 pawn from moving and in many queen's pawn openings and uh, several other openings white will want to play d4 and c4 gaining space white would also perhaps like to create a strong pawn chain with pawns on d4 c3 and b2 and all of that is impossible until the knight moves again so white is going to have to give the tempo back in order to solidify his position so black basically gets an opportunity to create a karokan pawn structure uh, with an illusionary tempo for white so if white manages to get uh, an ideal uh, play with his knight on c3 which is virtually impossible then the tempo is unjustified and black has made a mistake but so far theory didn't manage to prove that the knight on c3 is that good so this is the introduction to the opening and retreating the queen all the way back as i said could be very provocative uh, for the players with the white pieces because it does seem like a like uh, like a huge waste of tempo and uh, getting the Karokan pawn structure for black is, at least, at least in my opinion, uh, a great thing. Uh, before I start on the variations in the Queen D8 Scandinavian, I would recommend looking at the games uh, from David Garcia, uh, Dorfman and Nikola Djukic. Uh, those three players have uh, played the variation a lot. You can find it uh, in many other players' repertoire and you can find a lot of games in the databases and study them to get an idea. Once again, uh, the Scandinavian, as always, uh, it's the same with this variation, is an opening which doesn't revolve around studying countless lines, so it's really easy to learn, really easy to explain, and re it's really easy to memorize your setup. It's sort of like playing the London system against e4, which is a wonderful thing. You basically get uh, a piece and pawn setup you are aiming for, and you don't have to learn tons of theory. You only have to uh get comfortable with the strategy behind maneuvering your pieces and getting your attacking and defensive plans in order straight okay now let's go after queen to d8 same as after queen to a5 or queen to d6 which we are going to go over in the next video d4 is the only move for white uh, white has to gain some space uh, and open up his c1 bishop and start playing the position this is the best way to to use the tempo that was given. So d4 is objectively, objectively the best move. You can't create a strong center, but you can, you can still create uh, a center and gain extra space. Black has two possibilities here, one of which is by far the favorite of strong players. I would just like to mention the sideline briefly, even though I wouldn't recommend you playing that. And that's g6. And if you have played the Karo Khan, then g6 uh, is sometimes a setup even uh, in the main line uh, after knight c3. Uh, so you get a position similar to this, uh, and the only difference is that Black has exchanged his C pawn for the for the E pawn and not his D pawn. So if you imagine this pawn being here, then this would be the G6 Karo Khan. Uh, the other thing is that if you've played uh, or faced the exchange Karo Khan uh, sometimes, then G6 is a setup you could aim for, and G6 is something you could play, where you don't play e6 very often you keep your pawns on c6 and g6 and that makes your structure sort of different the same goes for this line and black is often going to be playing c6 to, to restrict d4 he's going to fianchetto play knight f6 and castle however the engines give this variation as much better for white i don't really know whether that's subjective or not but still Knight of knight f3, bishop g7, bishop c4, knight f6, castles, castles, normal development. And now, uh, if c6 was played, this would be sort of like an exchange Karo Khan, which is a position I'm very familiar with, and I played the g, uh, g6, bishop g7 lines myself. Uh, white now plays h3, which is a very good move, stopping uh, the pin by the bishop. Knight bd7. The only difference in the exchange Karokan is that white is going to have his knight on a much better square on d2 and not on c3. Uh, rook to e1, uh, knight to b6, chasing the bishop away, bishop b3, c6, queen to e2. Your pawn is under attack uh, and it's quite uncomfortable, so e6 is probably the best move. But you can try probing with rook e8 and once the knight comes to e5, you can retreat the rook back and white won't draw obviously and black doesn't have that much and that's why i wouldn't recommend this position even though white has a worse knight than in the exchange karo khan the engines don't seem to like this variation because probably the bishop is much better on b3 on this diagonal uh, than it is in the exchange karo khan so yeah the g6 line i wouldn't recommend instead of that after d4 just continue normally with knight to f6 and once again uh, we are going to go for the same perfect setup for black if you can achieve that 
then you're going to be better than in the queen a5 lines because you don't have to move your queen away. And if you saw the previous video, after c6, e6, bishop f5, knight f6, the queen will retreat to d8 in the main line and in most other variations. So if you manage to get your perfect setup, uh, your queen is already on d8, so your position has improved. White has two moves here, the theory argues which one is the main line. Knight f3 is the more popular move, and in all the books I've been through, bishop c4... In most books I've been through, bishop c4 is considered the main line. Still, both moves are popular, and uh, knight f3 has 300 and something games played in the database. Bishop c4 has 150, so knight f3 is more popular. So, let's go over bishop c4 first. Bishop c4. Now, uh, black has two options, uh, both of which are fine, and... Uh, I don't really know which one to recommend, uh, but I prefer the c6 line. So black can play either c6 or a6. a6, same as c6, prevents any knight to b5, but it also gives black the possibility to play to play b5 and Fiaketo his light square bishop play e6. So let's go over a6 first. After a6, knight to f3 should be played, and now use the opportunity to, to chase the bishop to b3, b5, bishop b3. And now uh, the main line might surprise you. Uh, you can go for bishop b7 and playing it sort of safe uh, because after bishop b7 e6 is possible. So let's say bishop b7 castles e6. I like this position. You have prepared c5. It's really hard for white to play d d5 because of your knight, bishop, and queen. And after c5, knight c6, I think black's position is fine. And the fact that white can never play the move c4 is marvelous. And you basically have more space on the queen side for free. But uh, the, this isn't the main line, even though it's perfectly playable, and it's something I've been looking into for a long time, and this is, in fact, the setup I intend to play. So a6, knight f3, b5, bishop b3, the main line is c5, going for a queen exchange. Uh, this now forces uh, white to capture. If he plays a3, then the bishop is dead after c4 anyway, so white has to take. Uh, so dc5. Queen takes d1, knight takes d1, e6, you are going to win your pawn back, a4, b4, a5, bishop, c5. Uh, don't really know what to say about this, I'm not a big fan uh, of this variation, because as we said, the knight on c3 was a nuisance anyway, it's going to be much better on e3, uh, the c3 pawn is now able to move, even though it might leave uh, white with an isolated pawn on c3, that doesn't really mean that much, it's going to be a passed pawn. So in this variation, white is basically able to create a passed pawn with c3, and the queens are off the board, so we don't have that much counterplay. This is why I, I don't like this variation, and uh, in any endgame, I think white is going to have more chances, even though your bishops look uh, amazing. So okay, this was a6, and uh, once again, after a6, uh, knight f3, b5, bishop b3, c5 is the more popular move uh bishop b7 has only been played twice and white won both games which i really don't understand uh, i mean okay he does have this move but as i said you play e6 and w what's the what's the big deal this is every variation of the scandinavian is better for white according to the engines because of space and this is nothing major you have to be aware of the tricks with knight takes f7 so it's going to require some defense if white plays perfectly, but it's really it's really not such a big problem. Okay, uh, now after bishop to c4, uh, the second move and uh, the less popular move, a6 is in fact uh, the main line after c6 after bishop c4, is c6. The move c6 leads to a forcing variation which can occur after knight f3 as well, and this is I think the most theory you have to study in the queen d8 line. So if you intend to play queen d8 Scandinavian, this is what you have to memorize. And this is the only thing you have to memorize, which is a great thing. Compared to the Nidor for the closed Roy Lopez, you save about 200 hours. Okay, uh, so knight f3, once again, bishop f5, going for the perfect setup, as I said. The difference is that now that the queen is not on a5, uh, white can play a bit more provocatively, because this knight isn't pinned. And now, knight e5 can be played immediately, harassing the bishop. After you play e6, uh, trying to create your perfect setup with knight bd7, uh, bishop somewhere, and castles, there's a problem. Uh, white is able to play the move g4, and after bishop g6, h4. 
And now uh, this sequence is complicated, but if you remember what the best moves are, you can enter a drone position. I'm not going to lie, this is uh, uh, visually much harder for black to play, and you're going to have to learn how to play it correctly. But once you do, this is the worst thing that can happen. So, okay, bishop b4. This is the main move. You're preparing after, uh, after this happens. You are preparing to play some tricks with bishop here so that the knight can't capture and then move the bishop here. So this for now saves the bishop. However, white now plays the move f3, stopping bishop to e4. And now, uh, seemingly, black is in trouble. Uh, you don't want to play h6 and allow knight takes g6, f takes g6, leaving you with a horrible kingside pawn structure. You play the tactical move knight to d5, double attacking the knight. And basically not giving uh, white time for h5, which would be a very bad move, because knight takes and you win the you win the rook. Knight takes c3, you have to take because the queen is attacked. Uh, b takes c3, bishop c3, check, you win the rook. So after knight to d5, white has to react. Bishop takes d5, seemingly reinforcing this threat, and now after removing the knight, uh, seemingly winning the, the bishop, but after c takes d5, h5, you have a resource, and that's the move f6. And you're going to lose a pawn, but you're going to be fine. f6, hg6, fe5, gh7. You continue with knight to c6, white captures, and now uh, white has seven pawns, Black has five pawns, but white's pawns aren't really that safe, and we are going to see why. I'm just going to show you the main line. We are sort of outside of theory, but this is the best line for black and for white. Queen e7, uh, queen e2, bishop takes c3 check, takes g6, preparing to recapture one pawn. Bishop f4, rook h7, rook h7, queen h7, castles long, castles long, bishop g5. And in this variation, after rook d7, c4, uh, dc4, rook d7, king d7, uh, the pawn situation is equal, and the position is completely equal. Of course, there are going to be some tricks. Uh, most human players aren't going to be playing the best moves after move 15, so you have to study the variation. I'm not going to make the video only about the c6 line, because it would take too long. So I would recommend that uh, this be the, the line you study the most. So let's go over uh, that once again. So after e4, d5, ed5, queen d5, knight c3, queen d8, d4, knight f6, bishop c4. If you play c6, you need to be prepared for those lines. So knight f3, bishop f5, knight e5. If white doesn't play knight e5, then you are going to have time to complete your setup and be fine. e6, g4, bishop g6. Once again, if, if white just castles, then knight bd7 continue developing. Uh, bishop g4, bishop g, uh, g4, bishop g6, h4, bishop b4. Remember this tactical sequence, f3, knight d5, bishop takes, c takes, h5, f6, h takes, f takes, g takes, knight c6. This is fine. Even though it looks much better for white, two pawns up, the variation is fine. And this is the worst that you can get. So this is what happens after bishop c4 or move 5. Either c6 or a6. As I said, a6 is... I can't really recommend any, but a6 seems safer. Okay. Uh, now, one more move that white has if after d4 knight f6 he doesn't play knight f3 or bishop c4 is bishop g5 this is a sideline which uh i'm not sure white should play this i'm not a big fan on, of the variation i think that bishop c4 or knight f3 are best so now c6 queen d2 preparing to castle long in some positions queen uh, bishop to f5 knight f3 e6 completing your uh pawn structure knight h4 but here i'm actually happy after knight h4 because bishop g6 takes takes gives black a perfect position knight bd7 queen c7 castles long bishop d6 your rook is on the open h file semi-open h file and black has absolutely no problems that's why on move five i think bishop g5 isn't really a good idea so let's go over the main line d4 knight f6 knight f3 same as in the queen a5 main line scandinavian knight f3 is the most common move now, uh, black has two options, three options really, one of them, uh, well, one of them, bishop f5, as in the queen a5 line, isn't as effective, so I wouldn't recommend that. The two moves which you should play are either bishop g4 or c6. 
Uh, c6 leads to the same variation we saw previously in the bishop c4 line, because now white plays bishop c4, and we get the same position, let's just go over it once more, uh, bishop f5, knight e5, e6, g4, bishop g6, h4, bishop b4, f3, d5, etc. We went over this, so c6 leads to that. And after knight to f3, what is considered the main line of the queen d8 Scandinavian is bishop g4. A slight difference uh, to what you play in the queen a5 line, bishop f5, because this is now more active pinning the knight, preventing, preventing knight to e5. Uh, after bishop g4, uh, white should just continue with the move h3, getting rid of those problems, and black should capture. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and now you are going to go for creating your setup. One thing that I would like to emphasize, uh, losing the bishop pair is normal in the Scandinavian. Losing the bishop pair with the pawns on e6 and c6, if the bishop you lost is light squared bishop, is actually fine, because your pawns are on light squares. And with these pawns here, in the advanced Karokan, for example, once you have the bishop on g6, it's a nuisance and it's not such a good piece staring at c2. So you don't mind exchanging it for the knight, which when the pawns are on e6 and c6, has a free hand of jumping into e5 and causing havoc. So I'm very happy to exchange the bishop for the knight. Continue with your setup, c6, bishop e3, e6, bishop d3, knight b to d7, it's very easy to play. Your knight always goes to d7, your pawns always go to e6 and c6. With the f8 bishop you can choose e7 or d6, same as in the Karokan. Uh, white castles. White can also castle queenside. Uh, after that, you play bishop, uh, bishop b4, knight e2, knight d5, uh, queen g3, g6, and still the variation is fine. White is pretending to be more aggressive. There isn't really that much in the variation, and I think castling kingside is better. So let's go over that. Knight bd7 castles. Uh, bishop d6, the more active. Uh, the more active square. If white uh, chooses to play bishop g5, then you can consider retreating the bishop, but I think d6 is fine for now. You can go for, since the knight on f3 isn't here, the one variation which I like playing and which I sometimes play uh, against the exchange Karo Khan uh, with pawns on e6 and c6 is rook c8, uh, bishop b8, queen c7, threatening the sensitive h2 square. With the absence of the knight, it's hard to defend, and if, if you can manage to provoke g3, then h5, h4 is a good plan, so keep that attacking idea in mind. So rook c8, which is a good move uh, in its own right because of c5, and then bishop b8, queen c7. Okay, after bishop d6, uh, white should continue with rook a to d1 and no castles. And this is the main line of the queen d8 Scandinavian. Once again, uh, you didn't have to move your queen around too much. Uh, if this is the position that you get out of the opening, if you are familiar with the pawn setups with e6 and c6, then you, you are going to have no problems. You have no problems here. It's easy to play, it's easy to understand, it's different to the Karo Khan uh, uh, because of the knight on c3, which is a bad piece, and white has to move it before doing something. Black can uh, go for e5 on c or c5 once again. Normal moves are uh, uh, rook c8, rook to e8. If white gets his knight to e2 and plays c3 trying to solidify, then the minority attack is a great idea. Same as in the exchange Karo Khan, so black is the one who has the opportunity for a minority attack. And the position is just rich. I, 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 I like the position, I like the pawn structure, I like the king safety for black. The fact that you don't have the bishop pair, as I said, is irrelevant and just a good position. So queen to d8 Scandinavian is uh, slowly but surely becoming one of my favorite openings and I think I'm going to implement it as one of my main weapons against e4. Uh, let me know what you think, I hope you liked the video, hope I managed to uh, explain the ideas behind the opening. Let me know what you think, I would appreciate you telling me what you think about the opening in the comments. Once again, thank you very much for the support and uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later, bye bye.